Nisali needs to change for the Dials. I want to see them try something different because otherwise it could be a quick 3-0 for the Chiefs. Well, nothing changing so far here. The Dials going to stick with their same two bands. The Aurelia is an adaptation to join Callista and Shivana and Rek'Sai Hecarim, same two for the Chiefs. So much respect put it on to Shivana from Swiper. Only saw it once. That was the first game of the semi-final. And look, Teleport Smite Shivana's been taking over the world and they continue to ban it away. Yeah, you have to think that Swiper has his finger on the pulse, knows what to do there. And we're going to see the picks possibly go through the same here again. Will it be three first round identical picks for both teams? That's the possibility with the Sivir taken. It is. I mean, the bans are even the same here for Chiefs like they were in game one. Sivir has gone to the dial of Spooks is hovering the Scion. and you have to think they're like, do we still want to do this? Is this correct? John are probably going to be taken, and there's the Scion again. Complete mirror picks on both sides of the rift in the first round in three games in a row. You have to say that suits the Chiefs. They're doing just fine, whatever they pick up. I mean, we said it. The Dials probably looking to change something here. What is it here on the blue side? They're going to at least give one of their lanes away blind, you have to think. And they're going to take their time here. You can see the Jungle of Soul Strikes on your screen right now, carefully considering what he needs to go. Because his team, they have no more games left to give away. So the Jungle Science taken away. I mean, maybe go to the Gragas. Take that away. I believe he he's played a Gragas game already. I'm not sure if it was a victory or a loss. Or try something different. Maybe Jarvan just for the potential of some early level 2 ganks with that uncleansable CC. You feel like if they fall into the same trap and just pick up Sejuani, it's not going to go any better for the Dire Wolves. And looks like they are going to avoid it. Krygus the pick there for Soul Strikes, but Morgana going to be the difference here. Not going to go back to the annual chopper. Instead, takes another more defensive support. And this is a champion Dire Wolves have used in three lanes. Top, mid, and support. They have tried the Morgana. So a very nice flex pick coming through from the Dire Wolves. One of the unique things about the Chiefs, they're not big about flex picks. They play their champions in one roll and one roll only. Radia, he's had the Sivir taken away. It's not necessarily for a laning situation. Again, it's the early power spike and uh, identical team comp coming through from the Chiefs that they lock in these champions. Yeah, it's funny enough that we had, you know, the same picks on either side of both teams. First picking away the Sivir on blue and then taking Sion Janna as a response, albeit for different lanes like you mentioned already. There's the Elise locked in and Lucian's coming in as well. The Chiefs changed nothing from their first game. They changed nothing and that first game was an emphatic win for the Chiefs. They even have last pick to open up a mid lane champion counter pick even for Swiffer. It was Anivia in that situation. Of course, flexible here. Urgot's available this time, locked in. There's the Cassidy, so finally going to see something different in the top and lane. this is the mix-up we expected for Dialves here in the last game. Go to something different, now have the Urgot to lock down the Lucian. Cassidy coming in as well, and as far as hard carry champions for perfection go, Cassidy might be atop the list, just under Hecarim. So I want to see one modification here, Patient. I want to see him go back to the Twisted Fate, because we know this is going to be a mid lane Urgot. They've already got Sivir. I guess it could potentially be a mid lane Cassidy, but that doesn't fit. Sharp's MO, he's not an Assassin player. He, and Kassin definitely errs on the side of Assassins. Twisted Fate has much more wave clear than Urgot, and Urgot can't really punish him in lane if he just hangs back and throws out the wild cards at max range. Twisted Fate's an option. Any control mid laner, Orianna even, would be a Swiffer pick and would also be very powerful in this comp. I wonder what they want, the Chiefs. Taking their time, you can see Rosie listening to his team. All right, what do you guys want? What are we taking here for our last pick? The Chiefs say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The exact same comp from Game 1's coming out. It's actually quite difficult for Urgot to take down Anivia just because she has two lives effectively with the Rebirth. You're going to run out of mana at some point if you're Urgot. A lot of wave clear coming through. All you need against an Urgot is wave clear, and Anivia has that in spades. Yeah, and we've seen again. Exact same thing for the Chiefs. They're the ones that don't have to change anything. They're up to zero. They can afford to give away a game if they have to. Of course, they don't want to. They'd love to seal it here and not have the worry of another upset final for them. But game one, they look great. Nothing much has changed here for the Dialves either. I mean, as far as comms match up, the Dialves have changed everything. Does that make a difference here? What I want to see the Dialves do is I, I want them to rotate around mid lane and get some defensive wards down. Because the thing about Urgot, people remember that at level 2, he can do a lot of trade damage with that lock on, but he has to overextend in lane against Flash Frost and Elise Cocoon. You need defensive wards if you want to have any semblance of lane control as Urgot. Because the moment you get into auto attack range, 425 range, 
Elise and Anivia show up, and you're not that tanky as Urgot until you get some mana behind your W. Yeah, we've seen that trend consistently here. Spooks on the Elise, especially when paired with the Swiffer and Anivia, go into the mid lane, gank that up, use the Cocoon, use the Flash Frost here. I mean, the Chiefs, again, they're in the best possible spot here in this situation, up 2-0. to zero. The Dives are the ones that have to change things up, and can perfection. He's got pretty broad shoulders. We saw them in the semifinals. Can he do it here with the Cassidy? But that's the scary thing. They're in the driver's seat 2-0 in terms of the series, and they're on the same comp they already took down Dial was with in game one. That's about a level of comfort I, comfort I could not expect. And it's all on the Dials to show us something different. The Urgot, the Kassan, it's definitely some different solo laners. But it's going to be a tough trip against the Chiefs. Well, it doesn't take much for Perfection to get going, but he has to get going real quick here in this series. The Dials down 0-2 to the Chiefs in our OPL Grand Final. The Chiefs looking good. Again, exact same comp on the exact same side from Game 1 here, and that was a win. But it's still very much a Dials comp coming forward. Kassen's definitely going to have the scaling advantage over Swiper, so will Chiefs be looking for a lane swap to try and get that Kassen in a 1v2? That's the one way to really keep him behind. His jungle follows not ideal and die wolves this is again a repeat of the first game they're going to go in aggressively for vision but in this situation chiefs they're not looking for the 5v5 they're just looking for answering walls you're instead looking to just get counter vision there you can see rosie and radia down to the bottom there getting some wards done potentially scouting for a lane swap chuffer going to put that deep ward down and spot anyone moving through so you have to think that perfection like in game one wants the 1v1 matchup in needs a safe lane to get the farm going on the cassin We'll see if we can find it here because it's already a struggle, I think. 1v1 for Kassin to just get some farm. Going to be even more so in a 1v2. I mean, in a lane matchup against Sion, Sion doesn't really have a lot of kill pressure against a Kassin. He already has the flask and three potions. So that's a lot of health regen coming through to just match the decimating smash. I mean, the raw of the Sion is not the max anymore on Sion. So you can just respect that Q range and stay back and don't take the same trade damage as when the raw of the Slayer was the max. We see King walked over a ward. He spotted it, but he's teleporting back. That's really clever there by King. I wonder if he's maybe trying to psych the Chiefs out. They didn't ping on to him, so, but I assume they've seen him, given that they put the ward down. We are going to have a swap initiated by the Dialers, though, and unfortunately for them, Raider and Rosie are already in the bottom half of the map. So Kassin will have to do the jungle follow. Definitely not ideal. Maybe this is the reason we haven't seen Kassin and Top return to the uh, competitive scene is maybe the trade-off. The fact that he has that lower range his late game is slightly more risky than it was before means that it's just not worth the risk for this Cassidy and Solo lane. And yeah, no camp here being able to be found by perfection. Couldn't figure out how to do that one even with a bit of help this time around. But we'll double jungle here with Soul Strikes. Spooks doing the same here with Swiper, of course, and we have a slam swap situation. I mean, we nef we should, never should underestimate Perfection's ability to get level 2 when he managed to jungle as Vladimir. But Cassidy, his only AoE requires uh, ally or enemy spell cast. So just a bridge too far. And Perfection's already entered the bottom lane. We already know horizontal jungling's happened. This is the most obvious turret dive of all time for the Chiefs. Yeah, they're already here. And they're going to probably take the rebuff and go in for it. Try and slow push the wave here to line it up with hopefully the cannon creep wave coming in. And then look for the dive. This used to be a tried and true strategy. And Perfection might be feeling it again soon. And Perfection even used just teleport to go straight to bottom lane when he knows the lane pushing. You can't do this again in a vertical jungling situation because you have to respect the fact that there's four members on the bottom side of the jungle. Well, they're now coming for Perfection. He does have his flash, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Level 2 in the double buffs there for Spooks. Perfection getting closed in on. He oh knows boy. he's in trouble. And he's level 2. Just the one summoner spell. Raid going to slowly push the wave in. Shuffer joining in as well. Level he actually one. might be the first target. He's level 1. It's Paul Morgana. Good binding, though. We'll get Spooks, and that might just wait the dive. They're going to come back in. Lucian walks in for first blood, though. It's just a strategic misplay coming through from Perfection. When he saw the wave being pushed in, one of his options is not to teleport straight into bot. He doesn't have Rift Walk available. Someone was going to die. It was going to be Perfection, Chuffer. Could have been both, but it looks like it's just going to be the one and a lot of turret damage coming in the bot. Yeah, sacrifice there for Chuffer, but at least keeps Perfection alive. But this turret, not going to last. His Swiper now going to use his TP. As King has pushed the wave in finally on the Siva. He'll collect plenty of safe farm here in the Chiefs. Don't get the turret, but good damage done to it. So let's explain what happened at level 1. A lane swap was initiated by the Dials into the top side. That means with the jungle follow, they control their blue buff and the enemy red buff. That's the top side of the jungle. As Radia takes a lot of trade damage in bot. In a little bit of trouble, actually. Perfection's kind of moved down there as well. He's going to go low as Chuffer's going in too deep. He's only level 1, though. Soul Strikes came in for a gank. Good pressure, but no kill. A lot of action. A lot of summoners used in the bottom lane off screen, but no kill credit is the result. But I mean, coming back to the lane swap, 
you control your blue buff if you're the direwolves and the enemy red buff. So that's the side of the jungle you need to be jungling on. That's when the jungle follower needs to go on. That unfortunately accentuates the fact that Cassidy, he just got single target auto attacks. He can't really do much in that jungle follower situation. When you teleport to bot, you know that the enemy's been jungling at their blue buff and your red side jungle. You know there's going to be minimum three, usually four members in that situation. The turret dive's so obvious when you use that summoner spell teleport. So it's just a strategic misplay, unfortunately, for the dial. And the dials have just honestly not been a team to land swap. They definitely prefer the standard lanes for both both King and for Perfection, and the Chiefs have never tried to give it to them in any of the games. Did get it in the first game, okay, didn't matter there, but Spooks moved his pressure. He was ganking mid lane in that situation. Mid lane's isolated right now because the lane swap don't need to go there. It just, it just shows they were kind of forced into a lane swap and then just didn't really have the street knowledge to be able to do it. It's perfection. He's getting picked on here as Radio and Rosie will move in. Exhaust comes down, no flash or riftwalk walk available. Radio gonna get low, good dodge of the piercing light, almost protecting, but all the mechanics in the world can't save him. And perfection has consistently shown Excellent mechanics in two Vladimir games, but for no result whatsoever. That overextended in a lane against a Lucian. The trade damage at level four, it's going to be real. Soul Strikes here, but no flash. Going to try in for this gank. They'll move in towards the brush that he's currently hiding in. No vision, I believe, available there for the Chiefs, but Soul Strikes can't do it. Chuff is only level three now. So he's just getting some experience. So instead, he'll come in onto Raider, who gets out of the way with his dash. And... Chief's bottom line stays safe. Yeah, all Soul Strikes could hope to do in that situation is just hold the way forward and ensure that it doesn't reset because as a level 3 Gragas, you're not going to have trade damage to deal with a pickaxe Lucian. Right, and I guess the thing is, with that mid lane getting plenty of free time for both of them, they're able to farm up. Urgot not getting bullied early on, actually slightly ahead in CS there with the early tier done already. They're going to both look to scale. Swift are probably going to go for that Rod of Aiders build again as Chuffer now getting low. Rosie going to get the slow and Tornado comes through, but Radio gets another kill. And this is nothing perfection can do. His auto attacks hurt, but you, it's a pickaxe. You have to respect the massive jump in power. Now 3 0 0, but Soul Strike's there. Finally, a flash forced out in the mid lane, but down the bottom, Soul Strike has come through. Perfection finally going to get himself a kill, and that's a big opening. It's a big opening, but at this point, he's got so much gold spent 1,400 gold. So, of course, the 80 carries. Uh, 80 carries curse, 1400 gold means not going to have enough for a beef BF sword, but still going to have plenty of power to bring into the bot. Yeah, big damage coming through. Pickaxe and the critical cloak being picked up now for Lucian. So we're going to work on that IE first. That's what we saw from Radius Lucian in game one. Makes a lot of sense. Sharp did force the flash of Spooks. Did come for a visit finally in the mid lane, but not too worried. Just used the summoner spell and farming away happily. But the big thing to consider about this mid lane is that Urgot only really starts to fall away against really high wave clear enemy mid lane. It's a Nivea's wave clear. It's not instant or near instant till level six. So the early levels were always going to be tricky for a Nivea to navigate, even with a 600 range auto attack. And there hasn't been the gank pressure coming from Elise just because she was caught up in the bottom lane getting those picks onto the for the first blood. So Urgot, he's got through the early laning phase. Sharp for once is not is even or ahead in terms of pressure. It's capitalizing on that and snowballing it with a Gragas gank that will really try to turn this favor for the Direwolves. Yeah, and Soul Strikes has certainly paid attention to Perfection's lane here. Going to look to donate the blue buff over to Sharp. In fact, both mid laners going to take a visit there for their blues and should be able to pick them up. Sharp will get his blind there as the buff does go away and Swift are going to pick his up as well. And with this swap, so we do eventually finally see a 2v2 situation. Sion only has a Glacial Shroud and the Frozen Heart will be good for the team comp, but doesn't help him land against Cassidy. So Cassidy should have just a fairly quiet, happy laning phase. Not a lot of harass is going to come through. He's actually looking for trade damage, which is smart, given that Swiper's not building for lane. And that's worrying, honestly. That swap back, I mean, they obviously want to go for that dragon, and Chiefs are going to move in for a fairly early first dragon here at eight and a half minutes. Should be able to get it. No vision here, and Raider even going to use the ultimate just to make sure they can get a bit of extra damage down and take it that much faster. Swift is here as well. Dragon does go down, but again, the dials, if they get their standard lanes, able to farm, one dragon's not too bad. And the dragon is a natural extension of the fact that they were vertical jungling on the bottom side. They were the first ones to put wards down. They were the ones that who controlled their blue, their blue side jungle on the enemy red side jungle. So whenever you initiate a blue side lane swap, you see dragon control. It's just a natural strategic adaptation that comes through. And that's fine with the dials. It's kind of funny that, again, when they don't like to play in lane swaps, the swap back, often very beneficial for them for this exact reason. Perfection actually got decent CS out of that extension. Now, ramping up nicely up against Swiper. And again, Sion can't really pressure him. So what do the Chiefs do? Swap back. Absolutely. They've been the ones that swap back intelligently. They've picked up the Dragon. No need to stay in the bottom lane. Happy to initiate the lane swap. Now you get a situation where the armor pickups looking excellent against the Sivir. And Radia's already been out trading consistently. King. 
And this is what I love about uh, the rotations coming through for the Chiefs. Lucian, Raider consistently buys Berserker Grease before finishing at Infinity Edge. And, and this sort of swap situation, it's a great pickup. I mean... The one thing you can say about the Chiefs to summarize them as a team, they play the map well. And unfortunately, that's Dial was one major weakness in the early game especially. They're happy to seed map control to be able to just get long laning phase. So when you play the map well, you, unfortunately, you play the Dial as well. And that's just transferred in two comfortable victories and working towards a third. Yeah, we'll see what the Chiefs can get done here, but Sharp... Still farming away, just that tier, but racking it up nicely there as he last hits out from under the turret. Soul Strikes will find Spooks actually was getting too friendly there on the enemy side of the jungle. Good Cocoon lands in, Flat Frost again, Swiffer landing in, but Sharp gonna find uh -oh. the swap. That might actually give the kill over. Soul Strike gonna get bitten down, and that'll be the first one. Swiffer cutting back into his ultimate. Swiper here is all Perfections joined in though. Sharp gets the killer. Great double stun into a double knockup. Sharp goes down, King joining in, and Swiffer still has his egg though. Does go down Perfection. Now gonna get chased down. He does get knocked up there. Swiper doing good damage, but he riffwalks just in time. King gets the next kill. Chuffer finds Swiper. The Vection might be able to find this second. Sion knows he's dead though, and that's a massive win for the Wolves. Yeah, three for one trade because the whole time Rosie and Radio were pushing down the outer turret and top. So they had the outnumbered situation. They reacted to it well, and they'll take the kills. They will get the, the turret. Sorry, will the cheese, but the kills going to crucial members of the Dire Wolves. Both King and Perfection pick up credits there in that situation. And we see it once with the Perfection cast, and it does not take much. So the Chiefs made the most of what was an outnumbered numbered poor situation to fight. Their CC layering as this goes on is really intelligent. Unfortunately, with the hyperkinetic position reverser, sets up the death for soul strikes and watch this layering of CC after Swiper initiates towards the end of this fight. Perfection's the first to rotate, but the CC duration is just infinite onto Sharp, never gets away from that CC bar. The fight continues. Perfection stays so long. I love the fact that he's confident enough and knows the damage of Swiper enough to last right till the end. They'll pick up the four kills uh, all together, of course, Elise dying, almost respawning as this clip ends. But the rotation from the Chiefs does get them top turret. Definitely you take the kills if you're direwolves, but they made the best out of a good situation. Yeah, the trade's certainly what they're looking for. Great rotations by both the bottom laners, actually, of the Wolves, with King rushing with his ulti and Chopper finding a way in the back end of the fight there as well. Radius still going to move to the top lane, continuing to try and keep the Kassadin down, but what was going to look like quite a delayed Rod of Ages is going to be finished quite soon. And that's why they have to be very careful of your Spooks in particular. He remembers the first game where he was able to counter jungle effectively against a Sejuani. When you're against Gragas, who has a lot more mid-game pressure, and a Sivir in particular, you have to respect the fact that the collapse is going to be so much faster from Sivir and Morgana than it is going to be from the Chiefs. In fact, the Chiefs didn't collapse at all in terms of their AD carry lane. It was far too far away from them. So maybe t uh, dial down the aggression a little bit if you're spooks, but otherwise, things going well for the Chiefs. Yeah, and all this swapping that's happening here, though, is kind of playing into the way the dials like to play. Not too many turrets down perfection. I'm not having a fun time, but plenty of CS early on here, and the kill's not, uh, not hurting either. It's a weird game here right now, and the Chiefs certainly have the front foot forward, but now with King starting to play aggressively, the Chiefs can't keep this up for too much longer. King's powering through. There's so much scaling going on in terms of items beyond these two teams. We've got two Rod of Ages going to come through between Anivia and Kassin. Gone a very greedy beard build here, has Swiffer with the tier as well. So power spike going to be delayed. Mid-game power is actually something we saw from Anivia in game one, was doing very relevant burst damage, but it's going to be significantly delayed this game. It's part of the reason you can afford to go these scaling items. Her bases are actually quite good, and if you can find some early kills, it's fine, but Swiffer not going to be the same uh, sustained damage champion Anivia can be when she finally scales in. All right, blue buff goes over. That's a good start. We've got the wall up now as well. Sharp also getting his blue, so not getting denied. And all the little things that the Chiefs were doing in the last two games, the Dialers have done a wonderful job of preventing most of them. And while I'll, I'll, I'll follow your point, and I agree that the base damage, 350 on the Frostbite on E, makes it possible to go this build, remember that... I mean, the mid game is where Dial was the strongest. The mid game is where Chiefs are really focused upon. That's why you look back at game one. Seeding the, the possibility of having significant burst damage from Swiffer in the mid game does set up this cast and does set up the late game coming a little bit sooner for the Direwolves. King in the bottom, though. Going to find a friend there and speaks a great cocoon landing in. King forced to flash away, but Rady will follow. Colin comes down and Rosie actually there to maybe take it, but Lucian gets it instead. Very nice brush camp coming from Swiffer. Server. That's the memo of King. You know he's going to overextend if given the opportunity and preyed upon by the Chiefs. Yeah, no twisted fate this time, but just and at least hiding in the brush to be able to take it out. A crucial turret 
Goes over to the Chiefs there as well, and the Dials for a second had a goalie, but the Chiefs back in the driver's seat, just slightly, about 400 gold ahead. I mean, look, Perfection's still farming up very happily, has the gold comfortably to pick up a Rod of Ages at 14 minutes. That's why I expected Swiffer just to go for the straight Rod of Ages, is that you're against a champion, a hyperscaling champion, that you can't answer with your team comp, so why give him the opportunity? Why delay your power spike to 25 minutes? Well, we'll have to see if it... Does hurt the Chiefs. They do get their second dragon, though, so continuing to get strong advantages at the 15 minute mark here. Soul Strikes maybe trying to line something up, but Spooks not quite there. Nope, Soul Strikes very patient. Dodges the Cocoon, actually. No ward there, I believe. So just some good reactions. Yeah, good reactions. Predictive Cocoon coming through from Elise was very clever. When watching the map, I mean, Dialos, they're coming towards the mid. They need to help Urgot with wave clear. That's the issue. They need to continue to rotate into the mid lane. As this laning phase goes longer and longer, the trade damage coming through from the Acid Hunters becomes less relevant. And the fact that Anivia has such strong wave clear advantage means that multiple members will need to continue to collapse to mid for Dialos. Let's have a quick check-in, actually, with some of these items. As we do have the Rod of Aiders done now for perfection, so looking good. We got a uh, Cinderhawk plus a Sightstone done there for Soul Strikes. And man, I mean, they Brutalizer there for Urgot. Infinity Edge not quite there for King, but I believe he has the gold ready to go to match Radius. I didn't pick up on the Lucian. The Dialves are definitely, again, matching power for power. It's just the scaling cast and they're interested in. But if they can stay strong as four, Perfection's going to buy. Get, get so much time bought for him by his team. Absolutely, and that's what he wants. We wa he wants the casting to get strong as possible. 15% CDR at the moment on Sharp, so 5% from Masteries and the 10% from his Brutalizer. You want 37.5% CDR if you're got to get out the fifth Acid Hunter during your Noxion Corrosive Charge. Uh, e, it has a five second duration, so 37.5 cents CDR gets you to that point. Oh, we'll work into a frozen heart to start to tip the balance, but gonna be delayed. Yeah, I mean, we've got good options here. Soul Strike's gonna try and find Spooks to swap. We'll land in as Elise is forced to repel away. Everyone gets protected. Great biting, but Perfection find his way in the bottom side. Sharp gonna get the first kill onto Spooks. Perfection though, gonna get destroyed by Radiant. Now the Cullen comes out. That forces the flash. Chopper zoning them off with the bindings. Rosie will flash away there out from the binding. As Chuffa got them away with the Soul Strike, it was a one-for-one -one trade, but Perfection crucially dead. Yeah, one-for-one -one trade because Siva was not present at the fight, had to use that on the hunt just to get there in that situation. Swiffer reads a bind. A wall, though, does come through. Swiper trying to line up the CC but can't quite find it. If they can get them off the turret, they'll be able to take it, but... Not enough poke here, and Urgot is doing good damage to Radia. But Siva is the only champion with near instant wave clear and has no mana, so that's the why they will continue to push their advantage in mid. With the mana bar short, they're going to look for another pick. Coming in again, Radia moving through. Flash Frost does land, but will pop the shield there. We'll sharpen, stay safe. Again, Swift with good wave clear, but no blue buff, crucially, so can't continue this forever right now. Got his rower stack, uh, stacking up, got his tid stacking there as well. Things looking good for Chiefs, but they're kind of in a power trough right now. They're kind of in a power trough in terms of comp, but they're going to continue to push because they have such a significant pushing advantage in terms of wave clear. They're just playing around their Anivia, knowing they have instant wave clear, and just trying to get turret damage where they can and force the Diwolves to stick together. If Perfection's in the mid lane, not getting solo experience, not getting solo farm, it delays his power spike later and later, and that suits the Chiefs. Well, Swiffer does not have enough mana now. The ulti coming through Perfection, maybe trying for a dive, but the Teleport will move in for Swiper. No ultimate available, though. The Roar of the Slayer slow, just missing, though, as Soul Strikes disengages with a barrel. Swiffer has to go back. He needs mana, and the Dial's going to go back as well. So that mid turret will stay alive. Yeah, the Dial was staying in lane and poking is actually forced out of Teleports. That will be a big advantage for Perfection in about three minutes' time when his own Teleport is available. You're basically swapping the explosive cask for a summoner spell in terms of the teleport, so that's a big win for the Direwolf. Yeah, Swiper back in the top lane will clear some of these waves away and start to scale up here. Does have a Spectre's Cal and a Glacial Shroud to go in with his Ninja Tabai plus the Ruby Crystal. So lots of components, kind of tanky, but looking to really build up to some of those big picture items. And speaking of building up, I believe the tier and to Mana Moon is almost complete. A hundred stacks left for the Mana Moon, so probably going to be 21 minutes into the game where we see the Mirror Mana transform. It's a good time to power, it's a team fight if you're the Dialos. They've got the strong initiation from level 11 sharp. Once he gets some mana back, of course, King has the Infinity Edge.
you'd have to say right now if you're going to take a team fight, Swiffer's tier build, well, you could actually punish that with earlier power spikes. And the Wolves are looking for it. They've been pretty aggressively picking at least as four, trying to find some fights. The Chiefs trying to answer with just some picks to keep the game contained and buy time for Swiffer. But even with any of you versus Cassidy, I'd rather have the Cassidy and Getty big. And both King and Perfection, you can see them in their sideline starting to push away as Soul Strikes just gets caught by Cocoon. Binding Lure comes in for Chuffer and he's just fine. Yeah, the smooth moves from the Fat Man gets him away from all the picks CC. They're going to be able to wave clear, so no um, advantage being able to be gotten for the Chiefs. Urgot and Sivir got a free back just in time for Dragon. If Direwolves can start prepping this Dragon, look at the minimap. There's a lot of red pink wards around that area. So the Chiefs at the moment do have exclusive Baron control. They could realistically look for a Dragon. Perfection down the bottom, no, but... This third dragon, probably a crucial turning point here in the game. The gold is dead even here as well, despite the turret lead that the Chiefs have and even a slight kill lead as well. It's again, those big carries, CS and King looking good, 10 ahead of Radier and 30 ahead for Perfection in the bottom, who's still farming in the bottom lane. And the only hole for Diwars, you have to say, as the lock on gets in, it's going to be a lot of trade damage to Swiffer. The only disadvantage for Diwars is the dragon, so if they can answer the second one, crucially not pass over the rotational a third one that's already been put to good use by Chiefs twice this series. They're going to be very healthy again with the Cassidy and Scaling into late. And they've got great options here as well. Muraman is so close here for Sharp as he's been spamming abilities with that blue buff left, right, and center. Soul Strikes eats a cocoon, but he's very tanky at this stage of the game, surprisingly, with all those natural tank stats coming through from the jungle graggers. Perfection level 11. Need to see Large Rod here. There's a great spot to fight, but Soul Strikes might get caught away. Chuffer zones him with a binding. Chiefs, you have to be very careful. And Chiefs initiation in an open lane is only the Scion diving in, so that's why they're trying to force these fights around their pink ward. So if Diwas can move their vision forward, Chiefs just have so few initiation options that Cassidy, with the low pressure, with the low engage options from Chiefs, should be able to power up sooner and sooner. Brady gets tagged by Urgot E as well. Spook's even taking some poke damage here. The Dragon's back alive, but the Chiefs haven't even looked at it, it feels like, here in this game. And the Direwolves, these scales are starting to tip. And this game is completely map control based for the Chiefs. If they can force the Direwolves to fight on their talents, to engage upon them, they will be very, very strong. But in these situations where Direwolves have been able to out-rotate them as Chiefs pick up the outer turret, that was look strong. Perfection though going in there. Dodges the cocoon sharp. Trying to find in as well. King's already popped his ulti. Swift's gonna get spot swap back there as a Rosie! Ulti into the team has to flash away. Resets with the monsoon, but too much poke still ready. Trying to find a line in. But even Swiper taking damage. Rosie might get locked away. The dials crucially find no kills. Yeah, the fight still continues. They're forced to back away still, even though... Oh, Perfection gets tagged by Radiant. Does go down. There's just not enough health right now on the Cassidy. And the Chiefs now can continue pushing in. Spooks going to get caught by a binding damage. Going to come through, but Repel will save him. And there's so much to dodge here for the Wolves. There's yeah, so many picks, CCs, but in the open lane, when they move back to these open lanes, they give themselves a chance to win fights. They need to start clearing out the vision. Crucially, the pink wards largely still up for Chiefs. And you can see they're looking for another engage. They have to answer the turret, but Sharp might get caught out. Good damage coming through, almost gets stunned, but Soul Strikes, Black Shield's gonna come down and prevent any sort of chase. Never mind, his Radiant just dashes forward and continuing to get kills. 7-1-0 and zero on the Lucian. Radiant's aggression during the playoffs has just been completely different to what we expect from him historically and in the OPL. He's really uh, pushed these uh, advantages as a lot of trade damage comes onto Swiffer. They need the turret here, though. They're not confident in their ability to tank it up. They but get the egg. You can see on the corner of the screen. <laughs> yeah, Swiffer just rebirthing there, and they will get the turret after forcing Lucian to the bottom lane with some good side wave control, actually. The dials finally get the outer turret spelled, and all of a sudden, lots of room to move around. And I feel like we learned a lot about that extended Dragon Siege that came through. The Chiefs comp, with their lack of initiation, with only Swiper able to dive in, need to fight around the areas where they have exclusive vision. So the pink wards were doing so much double junior, of course, giving them control of the dragon vision, but also really setting up their win conditions for fights. But Direwolves, when they were able to navigate around them, get those wards in, at this point, Soul Strikes can go and face check people because he's so damn tanky, especially with his drunken range active. The double sidestone might do a lot of work for them here because, again, they get over that vision hub. Team fights look pretty good for the Direwolves. Looks great here. We've got Sharp 
Scaling up now, Muramana has been transformed, was probably there for the last fight. Looking aggressive with the build, actually going to go for Last Whisper before he moves into a defensive item. So, curious choice, but wants to be a bit more aggressive. Perfection, almost done with the Zonyas, has the components there ready to complete it. And we look down as well, King going to go in for the Phantom Dancer. So, items start to scale up, and look at the other side, the Chiefs, they're ahead, but only by a little bit. In the last two games, we would have looked back and seen an additional whole item completed. This time, it's maybe a third of an item, half of an item up. Yeah, 25 minutes minutes only being back behind a thousand gold and a dragon that's definitely much more in the dial's wheelhouse consistently fell behind in laning phases throughout the OPL before taking it with late game team fighting the late game's looking more and more realistic in this game and just coming back to sharp's build he's actually maxing the noxion corrosive charge second and usually i'd say that's a mistake just because you get both offense and defense from maxing out the shield you get shield value but also the slows on your acid hunter but you need to be able to kill elise and sire and yeah. they have so much armor yeah swiper getting bound up their soul strikes almost gets himself into a nivea war but Black Shield's going to make sure he gets out there. And if you're getting poked back, does get tagged by the Ears Shuffer. Continuing to zone people away with bindings. The Perfection going to waddle back down. Who's again farming in the empty lane? Surprise, everyone. It's the cast and a Soul Strike. He's going to get Kikun Tornado just missing, though. Is that Body Slam going to keep him safe? Swiffer, very aggressive here. Soul Strike going to get cold, potentially. Good ulti will disengage, but too much damage coming in. Swiffer going to get the first kill. Perfection can't line anything up. King dodging out some of these skill shots. So does get tagged, though, by one. Forced to flash away as he he takes a big frostbite from Anivia. Chuffa ulting onto Rosie. No flash available. Does get Nail Perfection in a dive in. Wants to get the kill. King instead will get it, but that's going to force the flash from Perfection. And very greedy of the dials, but at least they get a kill. They were greedy, but that was much owing to the fact that Sharp wasn't actually present at the time when Gragas was picked. Choose quite a poor time to back to pick up the last Whisper. It will be a significant item, but that's what allowed the Gragas to be picked off. But no advantages taken by the Chiefs. The one-to-one, -one, you always give the the advantage the scaling team when it's even kill trades you give the advantage the dial and now king popping into the top lane gonna get some empty lane farm have to say the dial is playing much more together now when the chiefs group on them and only sparingly popping off their carries to other lanes to get farm to be fair, both Perfection and King still have CS leads, but it's not the massive 60 plus for Perfection that we're used to seeing. It isn't. And, and f coming back to Sharp as well, this Urgot build is mostly about killing Scion and Elise, or at least doing relevant damage to them. Usually you max the shield second, so you can go in with the bonus resist, the effective 500 health with your mana scaling shield, and be a frontline tank damage threat. The difference here is the swap's going to have to be used a little bit more defensively, or for initiation when Flash is available to reposition himself because he doesn't have the tankiness from the W second max or even the defensive stats of a Frozen Heart or a Hex Drinker, which will probably be picked up here to really continue a fight. So it's much more a Zereth kind of Urgot than necessarily a frontline fighter. And that makes a lot of sense from Sharp, who is, of course, big wave because big Safety in his player. Urgot. Yeah, one safety <laughs> as King does spell shield there. Sharp oh. actually diving in, binding in a code through, but Swiffer will flash away from it. King even used his ultimate there, but Dials can't find the kill. And they can't find the initiation. Sharp really the one that's got the reliable initiation with the flash ultimate but we've already mentioned doesn't really necessarily have the item build or skill max to really capitalize on it looking for an overextension spooks coming in aggressively but king just gonna eat the cocoon with his spell shield radio might try and tap over but a good rotation they just want the turret and they'll get it i mean they're just so smart at rotating around the anivia wall that's the critical factor that swiffer stops that particular uh, Co, so you just can't defensively protect your turret. They pick up the free turret. Dragon now spawns, and they're definitely in position to pick it up He's by the Chiefs. Got the Seraphs up now, though, does the Nivea. So more strength coming through. Zonya's completed for perfection, so things starting to get a bit better. Chiefs on top of their third dragon, though the Dialves like to fight teams off of their third. Do they have enough strength now? I mean, we're going to find out very soon. I think they have to opt into a fight. Well, they are going to try here. Soul Strikes might line up the ulti. Good zone, though, from Anivia created by the Glacial Storm. King going to get tagged by a stun. Soul Strikes going in for the steal, but Lucian going to get it instead. Swiper ulties, but gets real low there as he dives into the back line. Kong, they're going to zone them away. The Dials just need a pick, but can't find anything. But you can see it, how far Swiper was being chunked out, that when you have that... 20% armor reduction coming through from the Emax second Urgot and the last Whisper. Single person divers will not work here for the Chiefs. They need to team fight very carefully. So using the Anivia ultimate, channeling it just to split away, getting the, the objective, the fifth dragon might be much more relevant of a win condition for the Chiefs in game three compared to game one, despite having identical comps, just because Diwals, they put on something different here and they need to respect their team fight power. Yeah, I mean, they've just got a, a bit more strength where it counts. Okay, perfection. 
still late game champion, great. But again, matching power for power in the lanes that it matters. Swiffer, sort of the scaling champion here for Chiefs. And of course, it's perfection in the top lane for the Direwolves. It's been a very interesting game of sort of two different Foley first skirmishes and two different people at any one time trying to find the 1v1 for extra farm. I'm not sure who exactly it benefits, but this game is much closer than the first two already. And I'm so excited if this game goes to 40 minutes and it's on the same sort of even keel. Who wins in a kind of a, a, a diving the backline situation? Usually you'd say Scion Elise because they're just so damn tanky. And Elise always does relevant damage with percentage missing health and percentage current health damage. But against Urgot Siva, usually Siva struggles in the late game. But with 20% armor reduction from Urgot, if they're focusing the same target, that target has 20% less armor, does 15% less damage from the Urgot passive. And of course, they're going to be largely tanks that rely on their base damages. So those are both very relevant statistic. I feel like Siva could be an effective tank buster specifically in this comp. And we saw that in the last game, honestly. Radia just had a very big civil, was able to get aggressive and take out the big uh, Scion, actually. I mean, a lot of that was Scion. about Snowballer. That was the tanks were behind and the civil was way ahead. In this situation on an even keel at 40 minutes, I just feel like Urgot Sivir as a duo, you know, with Morgana to throw on a black shield or potentially more CC, could be a very relevant tank busting duo. I do like the Morgana pick here from Chuffa, just trying to be more defensive, realizing that his team's gotten picked up quite a lot. Just from all the CC available between Elise and Anivia King. Will, again, another nice spell shield with running. Swiper. Going to dive in. Has to use the ulti, but gets knocked up. Oh, Spook's going to dive in. Raid is on top, and that's the eighth kill for the Lucian. Yeah, you use the spell shield on the Decimate Smash. Plenty of CC coming after that. A smart child of the ulti, and they might get bonus. Nope, Soul Strikes gets away. Yeah, good black shield there. Keeps him safe there. Will Soul Strike finding lands onto Swift for perfection again. In the bottom side of the lane, picking up farm, but the Chiefs, whenever they no see No wave clear at all, pastry time. No, not. Not at all. And now they're going to move in, try and see what they can do. Radio actually gets tagged. Has to be a bit careful. Trying to clear it out. Swiper going in. Perfection's back, but Rosie has to reset. The base gets broken here. And just not enough here for the Direwolves. Yeah, the base being broken is the significant factor. With King dying, he is the key member. He is all of their wave clear. Couldn't even dissuade them with the Acid Hunter. Noxion Corrosive Charge. Uh, lock on coming on and the monsoon largely just to channel uh, the healing just so they could continue to tank the turret and finally break the base. And I was about to credit the Diables for being a bit more careful with their carries, splitting them up, letting them off. And Diables have actually done a great job of losing the minimum or nothing when Perfection's been away free farming. King going off there and overextending like he's we've classically Remember, seen he was him. overextending under his own inner turret. But the significant factor is that Scion managed to get King to use his uh, spell shield on just the decimating smash, then just had the obvious ultimate into a wall, corralled King into a bad spot. That was more on Scion being intelligent and, of course, the smart rotation coming through from the Chiefs than on King's position, because he was positioned very safe. I don't know. Why is King alone, though? If you know the perfection's off on his own farm, don't separate from the rest of your team. And the Dials going for almost a desperation Baron Lucian off to the bottom half of the map. The Dials might just get it. 3,000 health. Can he line up a big steal? Coming back down is the Elise. Swiper actually gets a kill on the shot. They're going to fight here instead. Perfection's too low though. Chuffer is going to go down. The Baron's going to get the. Who's going to get it? It might not matter. It is Spooks, of course, and the Chiefs route the Wolves in the Baron They pit. tried to rush down the Baron. Then they peeled away, but were still tanking the Baron. Crucially there with the Dials. 2,000 health the Baron remained on for what felt like an eternity. And King was just completely chased away from the fight. Now we'll steal away a red. That base was broken. It's going to be completely destroyed now. Yeah, you can see some of the corpses hanging out in the Baron Pit. Swiffer casually on the bottom side. Going to take away as much Speaking as the base Speaking of casually, can. Swiper takes no damage from the turret. Well, you know, he's a very large sign with a frozen heart. So not particularly surprised there. Inhibitors going to go down almost simultaneously here at this point. First one's going to fall in mid. Second will be here in the top half of the map. And the dials, we talked about it, they kept even for so long, but suddenly a very uneven looking game. And the Chiefs, they can just taste that Turkish cuisine that'll come their way if they are able to win this game. 2-0 up, now they've broken the base, two inhibitors down. It looks like the Chiefs will be representing Oceania at IWCI. It feels like it's a formality, but things have changed in the late game for Dials, and they're getting closer and closer to the items they need to fight. The question is, do they have enough of a base to protect? I can imagine the Chiefs have had that exact mindset before, Papa Smithy, and I can tell you it is dangerous in this situation to get overconfident. The Chiefs, when asked about losses, said we mostly lose to ourselves, and you know that's maybe unfair to some of the teams who have done excellent Excellently in the first uh, split of the OPL, but the Chiefs 
They've been the best for a while for a reason. They've looked like the best again here. Can they prove it to themselves and to their fans here? I mean, on the back of Radio, it looks likely pastry time. Once again, 480 carry items and a QSS. Hasn't been winning the MVPs, but it's mowing down people. 10-1-1. One one. If that's not a carry performance, I don't know what is. We'll have to see. The Chiefs just need to close out the game. Have a very good spot to do so. King, of course, farming in the top lane getting what he can. The Dial's trying to keep up and running out of things to give the Chiefs away. They've sacrificed a lot for farm on their two main carries here, but the Chiefs not going to let them get away with this. The Baron up I minions mean, doing work. King respectably mowing through them on the Civil. You talked about the wave here. Massive here coming in, but the Chiefs just got such a big advantage. All they have to do is wait or dive. And you know what? They can probably do either. It's a crazy condition, win condition for the Chiefs, but they just need to make King use his spell shield. That's the big factor. The moment that's on cooldown, that's the go button for the Chiefs and Swiper in particular dive in. Massive super main... Super minion wave pushing in the mid lane. The go button's going to come soon. Yeah, it means King actually did use the shield. Might have it back soon. Sharp going to get tagged there. Culling will move in just for poke damage. Good wall actually catches him in there, and that's going to force Soul Strikes to use his ultimate to get them away. Swiper, though, massively tanky. They're just going to move in for the turret. Nexus turret already dead to Super Minions. Chiefs going to move in for the bottom side as well. Swiper forced to flash away, but the dials have to run back to their base. And Radia tanking the turret on his Lucian. It's one of the luxuries when you have that Bloodthirst and all. All the lifesteal, Janna for disengage as well. Diwars, they might look for engage, but they've already had their third out of inhibitor turret down. Not a lot to fight for at this point, and they feel like the Chiefs will just rotate in and take this inhibitor. It just feels like the Diwars always come back in when it's a little too late, when they've already lost something, not able to play proactively here in the Chiefs. They've had momentum all series long. Perfection gets cocooned out of a ripwalk and dies to raid here. Amazing players. King going to get dove on Chuffer. Looking to be the next target of everyone. Okay, for now, Spooks will be forced to flash away, but that cocoon was amazing. And they have to respect Radius damage. Goes in aggressively. Yeah, legendary, of course, now on the Lucian. Gets another kill. Sharp might make it another here. Radius racking them up there. Make it another as he gets a triple kill on that last team fight in the Chiefs. Looking happy. Get on to the Nexus, and they've done it. Congratulations to your IWIC Oceanic representatives. The Chiefs finally win. 19-1 and one on the season. Only the one lost of four not. The Chiefs have done it. They finally make up for what was a desperately poor 2014 by starting 2015 on a high. And you can tell there they were very serious after game one. Letting out a little more in game two and finally just a sigh of relief on everyone's face. It's been so long since they've won. It's crazy to say that about a team like the Chiefs, but you can tell when they finally break through once again, it means so much to them. And you can just see the advantage of keeping that settled lineup that's been together for so long. 18 months this lineup has been together. They suffered the defeats. They suffered the low points of 2014 have come back with a plum in 2015. Wonderful performance by them and worthy winners. You can see moving around, shaking the hands of the Die Wolves. The, the Wolves played fantastically all season. Amazing almost that they got to this point to the final, beating Legacy, who almost seemed like the favorites to get another big final against the Chiefs. But you have to think the Chiefs may be thanking the Wolves for taking them out because the Chiefs, they couldn't beat Legacy, but they take it cleanly against the Wolves. They just had the number of the Wolves. 5-0 and oh on the season and playoffs was the result. 3-0 and oh in that matchup. You just felt like they were just so superior, so on top of map rotations. And that was the undoing of, of the Die Wolves in general. They just could never get the counter rotation. They could never get perfection to the three, four item spike. And King was actually caught when he was overextending. I mean, the Chiefs knew their win conditions. They acted on them, and they're going to be worthy representatives of Oceania and Turkey. Yeah, finally get another chance to prove themselves here as well. So we are going to look at the IWCI format, of course. We've got teams coming through. The Chiefs now are Oceanic representatives. Going to join Japan's detonation Focus Me and Turkey's Besiktas Esports Club. Still four more regions to determine. Going to be a massive tournament with seven wildcard representatives. And of course, the winner potentially moving on to Tallahassee, going to the mid-season Invitational. But IWCI is not far away in these teams that the Chiefs now especially now that they've won they're going to want to take it all and get that one step further but you're going to be riding high after any victory but 6-0 in playoffs 13-1 and in the regular season so much confidence their second appearance on the world stage after of course 2013 in 2015 they're looking strong the meta seems to suit them they're flexible it's the Elise it's the Zac it's everything from the jungle Swiffer with his MVPs I believe that does crown him our champion for this split as well 
The Chiefs looking good. They're looking great here in the Wolves. No slouches at all. Had a great season. Happy to, or maybe not super happy to finish second, but a worthy second place and a strong finish there for their first OPL split as well. They're going to come back into split two and feel reinvigorated, you have to think, to really give it to the Chiefs again. But the Chiefs this time, they are winners. And you have to feel as a Dials fan, you're going to feel so much heart about this 2015 OPL season. Doing things and leveling up at the end of last year, maybe overperforming this year, making the final. The next step for them is just to be champions. And we'll go out, of course, to the arena. That is it for Papa Time, but let's join Atlas. Thank you very much, Pastry Time, and what an incredible performance by the Chiefs. Unbelievable stuff for the first time since Riot arrived here in 2013. That is a championship series that doesn't go to all five games. And this was all off the back of our MVP, Chief Swiffer himself. And here is Daniel Captain Stupendous Ringland, our head of esports, to present him with his trophy. And doesn't he deserve it? Three brilliant games. The TF really stood out for me, Atlas. A very well-rounded performance. Absolutely incredible. Getting around the map, building crazy items. What an incredible performance. And ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you our first split two, 2015 Champions of Oceania, the Chiefs. And they did it in pretty convincing fashion. The 3 0 coming through. And that was a very, very, I guess, swept series in the end. They really did it convincingly. And it was just a fantastic overall performance. Yeah, absolutely wonderful as Daniel's going to present them with their trophies.